Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anubha from Pediatrics and uh, today with us we have respected uh, pediatric intensivist and pulmonologist Dr. Anil Kumar Sapare. Welcome sir. On the eve of uh, World Asthma Day on the 3rd of May, today we will be going on a journey highlighting the different aspects of childhood asthma. Sir, uh, to start with, can we discuss about the key symptoms of childhood asthma, sir? Yeah, that's very important uh, question, Dr. Anoba. Key symptoms in childhood asthma are wheezing, difficulty in breathing, or what we call shortness of breathing and coughing. This remains fundamentally three most important symptoms. Coming to wheezing, it's actually a musical sound that the parents hear when the child is having these episodes of asthma that comes from the chest and they can hear swing, swing, whistling kind of sound uh, during the breathing and especially when they're breathing out. And that wheezing generally is associated with difficulty in breathing. Child has got either a fast breathing, has got a retractions. In addition, the another important symptom of childhood asthma is coughing. This particular coughing is generally dry in nature and it's more periodic. What I mean by that is sometimes happen more in the night time that especially in the middle of night and they wake up in the middle of night with severe bouts of cough, cough, cough and that disturb their sleep. Again, this cough can be more in the early morning and some parents very characteristically say that whenever my child is running or playing or climbing or laughing or crying, child gets coughing spells. And this combination of wheezing, difficulty in breathing and coughing are most important symptoms of childhood asthma. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, as you said, the symptoms are generally variable, but uh, they are persistent or intermittently the symptoms? Uh, the, based upon the frequency, the number of times these symptoms happen, and how severe these symptoms are, they are classified either into intermittent form of childhood asthma or a persistent. In the earlier category that is intermittent, these children have far few symptoms. They have recurrent episodes of cough, less frequent, maybe only one or two times a week. These children are getting only few times in the night time with the spells of the cough compared to persistent asthma where the symptoms are there all throughout. So most of the nights child is coughing, most of the days child is coughing and wheezing. This second category belongs to persistent type. And based upon how severe the symptoms are, they are also classed as either it is a mild, moderate or severe. Fortunately, in our practice, what we see, majority of them are mild and over. Thank you. Sir, uh, are there any specific things that uh, parents should be aware of that, that they should note or make a diary of? Then yes, I mean, in order to for us to help whether we are dealing with an asthma that has started very early on in the childhood or something that is recently started, number one. Number two, where exactly the symptoms are starting. If the child is coughing more in the, in the night in the bedroom versus whenever child is going out at a particular place, the child is starting to sneeze followed by coughing then they need to also document how frequently the child is waking up, how much his coughing, wheezing and breathing difficulty is affecting his schooling, his sleep. These are the key things parents should document, keep a diary in and that will help us to basically group these children into category and help us to uh, modify our treatment accordingly. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, once parents come to us, they tell us the story that uh, this has been happening with my child. We see the child and assess, uh, we see the symptoms then and we arrive at a, uh, to arrive at a diagnosis, what investigation should we do? It's a good question. I mean, uh, in childhood asthma or wheezing problem, it is the history that is provided by the parents is most reliable in diagnosis. None of the investigations are generally needed. However, there are some tests that support the diagnosis of childhood asthma. One of them is spirometry. What is spirometry? It's a simple device 
wherein the child is asked to blow forcefully with a mouthpiece and the computer will demonstrate the ability of the baby's breathing effort. Based upon that, we derive some parameters called forced expiratory volume and from that we will be able to see if there is obstruction of the breathing tube. And the percentage of the obstruction is calculated by machine and will help us to show how bad his childhood obstruction, airway obstruction is there. So spirometry helps us in the diagnosis. However, this can be done only in children who are older than 6 to 7 years. We have uh, another device called impulse oscillometry. Again, very simple to perform. Children have to just hold, hold it in their mouth and breathe a normal breathing. That this particular device does not need forceful maneuvers. And the computer with the ultrasonic impulses will be able to calculate a lot of parameters, obstruction and uh, the capacity of the lung. This gives the measures to say if the child has got narrowing of the breathing tube and therefore presence of asthma. In addition, we also not only do the lung function test, also we do what we call allergy testing. And the test we use is skin prick test. And in the skin prick test, we try to identify what are the common allergens this child is sensitized to. For example, house dust mite, excreta of the cockroaches, pollens, molds, in some houses where the walls are very damp, aspergillus fungus is there and some of the children are exposed to these fungi called aspergillus and we and when they are exposed to this they develop sensitization and allergy. So we test with the help of skin prick test which is a very simple we do even for a one year old child without any problem that will help us to identify what allergic sensitization this child has. We have other additional test which we use in selected cases. However, lung function, skin prick test and sometimes if there is doubt about diagnosis, x-ray and blood counts are used to help facilitate either it is asthma or some alternate possibility is there. Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you. So after we have diagnosed a child with asthma, how do we go about the treatment sir? Treatment is very simple in childhood asthma. In last 30 years, the treatment has become very rationalized and protocolized. Worldwide, the treatment is a very standard. After invent of inhaler, the management of asthma has become very simplified. These inhalers are the devices that deliver anti-inflammatory drugs at extremely small doses. And that small doses directly reach to the lungs where there is inflammation or what we call allergic narrowing and when we take those inhaler medications regularly the symptoms response brilliantly so coming to this inhaler therapy i am talking about there are two types one is preventative another one is reliever therapy this preventative therapy is either fluticasone or budenoside they are glucocorticosteroids but not the steroids that we are using orally these are in the micrograms, therefore they are kind of one thousandth of a milligram. So they are these small molecules, smaller dose that when given only works locally, does not go to our system and does not have the side effects which the oral steroids cause. So these medications when taken on a regular basis, the symptoms respond. The second thing I was talking about, the relievers. One I was talking earlier was preventer and the reliever. Relievers are salbutamol that is taken only when the child has wheezing, coughing or breathing difficulty for two to four days to relieve the narrowing and congestion. This will relieve the symptoms immediately. However, it will not prevent the occurrence of this symptom. For the prevention of the symptoms, you have to take the inhalers called preventers prescribed by your pediatrician for a substantial amount of time. Now you may wonder how long these medications are treated. The preventers are taken generally for three months and relievers are taken only for two to seven days till the coughing wheezing is present. Once your symptoms abate, you stop the relievers and continue on 
preventers. During follow-up, if the symptoms are completely stopped for a period of time of six to eight weeks, we reduce the medication and eventually stop. Okay, so, so as you said, there are two types of medication. So once the child is stable, do we need to continue it for lifelong, sir? Or? Answer is absolutely no. This is what the parents come and suddenly in panic ask, do my child needs this medication for lifelong? No, not really. As, as we have understood from the research, not only in India worldwide, majority of the childhood asthma is transient. Those who have onset less than three years end up being transient. So this is used only temporarily for a period of two to three months, six months, and we do the assessment. So only children who have got persistent asthma for last four years, three years, plus their family also have got asthma like parents or brother or sister has eczema, allergic rhinitis, asthma that is going on for years, then the likelihood of this child having chronic asthma is far higher. This is the child who may need for few years. Nonetheless, majority of the children need only sh for a short duration of time uh, these inhalers. Thank you, sir. This would be of great relief to the parents uh, listening to this. Sir, uh, as you have mentioned earlier about the triggers, could you please highlight on the things that parents should be cautious about, about the triggers? Yeah, 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 that is extremely important because just giving medications is not adequate. So avoiding triggers become the most important component of therapy. For example, in our practice, house dust mite, they're small creatures that are there in plenty in the dust. And these mites, male and female, their excreta, their feather and their body parts are extremely allergenic. They can be only visible in the microscope. We can't see it with our naked eyes. That is the problem. And the precautions are the parents should prefer to use cotton bedding, pillow cover, plastic encasement, keep the room well ventilated, avoid dust, avoid soft toys, carpet, rug, wool that may attract a lot of dust particles. So by doing so, you are reducing the exposure of house dust mite to these children. And in addition, in the home, if they can clean all their rooms, uh, keep well ventilated, avoid some rooms which are congested with lot of lot of things clustered and cluttered into the room. These all can attract lot of dust and dust mites and that may trigger recurrently. In addition, if your child is sensitized to pollen, wearing mask, glasses that avoid exposure to these pollens when they go out in a specific sites. If the child is sensitized to cockroach, mother and the family can take some pesticide control. And if you have a damp wall in the home, uh, wall treatment uh, to reduce the damp and fungi will be helpful. And the prevention is directed by what the child is sensitized to. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. This has been a very informative session and would help all the viewers watching this. Sir, any last message you'd like to share with the Yes. Yeah, it's a very good uh, this thing prompt to me. The last message I would like to do, the par majority of the parents when when I discuss about possibility of asthma in the childhood and need for inhalers suddenly get thrown away. Oh, inhalers. And they have that phobia and fear about its addiction, its side effects and long term need to continue that. They are, all of them are myth. Have they got any side effects? In majority of the cases, answer is frank, no. Is it addictive? Absolutely no. Uh, do they need to be given on long term or lifelong? Absolutely no. These are given for a very short duration of time, maybe six months, one year, during the time when the symptoms are present. And if taken for five to six months, children do not get addictive, whether whether you continue or not, the child will have symptoms only if he is going to have symptoms. By stopping, he may not have recurrence of symptoms. And uh, uh, coming to side effects, in long term studies, lot of studies are done and they are found to be extremely safe. Only few children can have some uh, dysphagia, dysphonia, some fungal infection and that complication can be reduced by gargling 
soon after taking the inhaler and spitting out. Apart from that, no other major. I think this the, the message I would like to get across is if the child has got specific symptoms, don't sit at home and keep on giving syrup after syrup, syrup after syrup, month after month, year after year. That is not going to treat. If your child has got recurrent cough, more in the night time, wakes up, wheezes, cough during playing, crying, laughing, he also gets breathless after climbing stairs, cycling. This could be a wheezing problem. Seek the help of your pediatrician. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for throwing light on so many aspects of childhood asthma. Thank you.